When people ask me about my hobbies, I have a hard time answering. To put it simply, bones is what comes to mind first. When looking for a term that I felt fit my hobby, I came across vulture culture. Now, vulture culture stems from the majestically bald-headed birds, the turkey vultures. Their striking red featherless heads are made for digging in flesh, and you likely see them circling roadkill on hikes and car rides. To me, they embody what it means to be a true scavenger. They never kill, only clean. Now, there's an essential distinction to make when comparing a vulture to a killer. Vulture culture is simply desire to explore one of the few aspects of life foreign to all. We do not cause harm, instead we examine the aftermath of others' doings. Unlike hunters that mount the heads of their dead and discard the remains of a life short-lived, vultures traverse the woods in hopes of finding the remains of a body nature let go. Trophy hunters are a threat to life. Living creatures have become an industry. Severed limbs are worth thousands, yet the majority of the once thriving animal is left to rot. When an animal dies, organisms come together to reuse and rebirth death. We do our best to embody nature's ways, leaving bodies out to be consumed, creating energy for those in need, allowing maggots and dermistid beetles to amass where organs once lived, echoing motions that sustained one into motions that sustained thousands. When I began collecting bones, one of my first projects was a small mole that I found dead in my backyard. When I found it, I carved out a spot in the dirt and I buried it for a month. I gave time for insects and larvae to consume its internal organs, and when I uncovered it, what I saw remains forever stuck in my head. The small mole was teeming with thousands of writhing maggots. They created a slow ripple throughout its body. It seemed as if it was breathing. It was gruesome at first. However, I've come to admire how alive it seemed in that moment. It was so, its, its body was rippling as if it was breathing. And I keep that memory in mind when working on all of my projects. I focus on respecting the natural ways of life while simply keeping what's left over. Now, knowing how beautiful this natural process is, why do we not give ourselves the same respect? There are almost 111 billion buried bodies, forgotten by so many, yet unable to complete the cycle of life and death because we desire to keep them in a stiff facade of life. Now, in the process of embalming, the body is drained of blood and replaced with an artificial concoction of carcinogenic chemicals. After being injected, they are dressed and caked with cosmetics to be put in a 33-square-foot casket and buried. There they lay trapped in a dark crevice, prevented from decaying into sustenance for vegetation and later animals. Vulture culture accepts death, not in a macabre sense, but we try to honor this foreign truth. We embrace it and try to explore it, we will likely never know what death truly holds, so we should explore it rather than avoid it, and vulture culture does just that. Now we must find the turkey vulture within ourselves and bury our heads in the mess. Through assisting the stages of natural decomposition, we can slowly come to admire the intricacies of mortality and the ways in which it works to fuel future life. Skeletonization is the final stage of decomposition, and that is what we keep. Now, I want to speak more about how vulture culture has affected the way that I view life and death personally, and I now have a deeper appreciation for my surroundings. My room is full of bones. I am surrounded by them constantly, and forcing myself to have such a close proximity to death has pushed me to think about mortality much more often, including my own. I no longer see death as an end. Instead, it's just another stage to one's existence. I see it in a neutral way rather than a negative. Now, a fascination with death is always followed by comparisons to Dahmer or Bundy. Trust me, I've heard it all. But I think a close relationship with death can be healthy. 
As a society, we have chosen to avoid all conversations or mentions of death. I mean, we barely even use the word died. Instead, we say passed away, moved on, or is no longer with us. The term pass away is one of the oldest euphemisms known to English. Many people don't like thinking of death and their loved ones because the word died sounds so final. By replacing the truth with comforting euphemisms, death is further stigmatized. By using such vague language, we further reduce death to a sort of unknown entity that takes us away from what we know. Now, in many ways, death is unsettling and ominous. However, it's one of the only things we all share, no matter who, what, or where we are. We will all die eventually, so shouldn't we be comfortable with that idea? We live for a reason, and we die for a reason as well. We may not know the reason or what it brings, but we should appreciate what we do know and what we can learn. Death allows for the continuation of a species, for growth. We learn from those that came before us, and we evolve and reflect on the choices of our ancestors to create a better world for our children. We learn to appreciate the people in our lives, our surroundings, and the beauty of temporarity. Physically, we provide nutrients for insect, plant, and fungal life. Now, I understand that death is a scary topic, and no matter what your feelings or relationships towards death are, I simply want you to remember that death connects our world. We can use it as a tool to empathize with each other and all species of this planet. The more comfortable we become with an exploration of death, the freer we become in our lives. Thank you.